This is the Kalami Atlas, and a ton of you have asked me to check this chair out, and I can understand why. Its price point is pretty attractive, coming in at under $300, which is a perfect price point for many of you out there. It definitely punches above its weight class in terms of the adjustments it offers, in terms of the build quality, and it's just a really, really great chair. However, there are some critical flaws that I think you should be aware of before running out and picking up this chair, and if those critical flaws about this chair turn you off, at the end of the video, I'll offer some alternative alternatives that I think don't run into the same issues as the Kalami Atlas. Let's get honest. Links to everything will be in the description as well as in the pinned comment. Using them costs you nothing, but it really helps this channel out, really helps support these reviews. And of course, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. That helps the algorithm. I've noticed there's a rising tick of like AI generated uh, chair review things that really, really suck and just push out, you know, just junk chairs. By supporting this channel, you actually help suppress those ones for the algorithm. So yeah, anyways, long story short, really, really appreciate your support. The Kalami Atlas has phenomenal build quality, especially especially for a chair at this price point. The legs are made out of metal, uh, nice, solid, robust metal. The arms are actually made out of metal as well. The part that slides in and out is plastic, but what's most surprising is, listen to this, no rattle in the arms. That's pretty awesome considering chairs that are much more expensive have rattle in the arms. The seat cushion, phenomenal. Nice and thick, I would say a medium firm firmness, so not the softest thing in the world, but pretty firm. Can't feel the bottom at all. When you slide it out, you don't feel any gap in the back. It's just really well done. The mesh and the plastic are kind of what you expect for a chair at this price point. It's not the greatest, but this is a more fabric-y mesh, which means it's not gonna sh uh, chafe your arms and stuff when you, or hands when you rub across it, neither your arms and things like that. The plastic is just kind of whatever. It's what you would expect, the plastic you would expect on a chair at this price point. There's a critical build quality issue though when it comes to the inner workings of the chair, but I'll explain more about that when we get to the seat section. Now let's start from the bottom, or break down the chair from the bottom, working our way up. The casters in this chair are okay. They roll fairly well. When you put weight on it, it rolls a little bit better. Not the best casters I've seen, but they get the job done. When it comes to the legs, again, they're made out of metal. They're a little bit rounded, so not the best solution for people who like to put their feet up on the legs when you sit, because it slides off pretty easily. When it comes to the features under the chair, we'll start from the right side. On the right, you've got this tab up in the front here, and this is gonna be your height adjustment up and down, and it goes up and down a good amount, nice and smooth. Then in the back here, you've got a tab, and this is going to unlock your back tilt. Uh, and it's kind of weird because down actually locks and up unlocks. It's a little unintuitive, at least for me it was. And you can lock it in various tilt positions, and you can see that it goes back pretty darn far, which is a big bonus about this chair. And then, Right here, you've got this knob that turns, and when you turn it, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, it's gonna control that back tilt tension. Now, this is one of the critical flaws that I see about this chair, is that when you tighten it all the way, and you'll know you'll tighten it all the way because it'll start to click on you. You hear that? At that point, you can no longer tighten it, but look how loose this is when it's fully tightened. Like, this is me putting hardly any weight on it, and it goes back way too far for my liking. It's way too loose for my liking. Uh, I personally, when I sit in my chair, I like to unlock the back, and I like to tighten it to the point where when I tilt, I tilt just about this much. This is perfect for me. It kind of feels like I'm hanging. It feels like my upper back and everything are using, are, it's like, I feel like I'm, I love this position. This is way too far. I feel like now I'm kind of stretching my arms out. My neck is in an awkward position having to come forward a little bit. So I do wish I could tighten this more, but that's it. So if you like to also kind of hang in the air just a tiny bit, it's not gonna work because you can't lock it in that position either. The lowest you can lock it is right about, no, here. So again, that's way too far back for me when I'm sitting in my chair. Something to keep in mind. Now, when it comes to the left side, you've got this one tab here, or this one knob thing here, and basically what you do is you pull it out, and then if you spin it, well, the seat pan will come out. Keep in mind that the arms are connected to the seat pan, and so as you roll it out, the arms are gonna go out with it. What's really neat about this is that I haven't seen this kind of roll out feature where the seat pan rolls out on any chair except for the Steelcase Gesture, which is like a $1,600 to $1,800 chair. So this is phenomenal that it works like this. And as I noted before, and I'll talk about when it comes to the seat, you don't feel any kind of gap in the back when you scooch all the way back. But this is also another critical flaw and a bigger flaw than I think the one on the right, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and scooch it all the way in. Now watch, and sometimes the way I sit is I sit by sitting back, but I like kind of jut my hips forward, and watch what happens. 
Did you see that? That was, I barely put any pressure on that. Just for reference, I'm about 176 pounds, so I'm not the lightest guy in the world, but this chair says it supports up to 300 pounds. This mechanism is essentially broken, because again, if I just, look at it, I'm barely putting any weight. I'm just tilting back and just letting my hips just kind of loosen, and it just kind of naturally tilts forward, and, or sh like moves forward, and that entire seat pan just moved all the way out. Now, this can be a critical flaw for a couple people. If you're five foot, I say, uh, I'm getting into sizing here, but I think this chair could go as low as like five foot three, because it goes pretty low, you get a lot of knee support here, but if you're like five foot three and you wanna sit ergonomically with that two fingers in the back, that could be a deal breaker for you because a chair pan that's out that far, look at where it sits when I sit all the way back. Now it's touching the back of my calf and I'm five foot six. So if you're shorter, it could be a deal breaker for you. If you're taller, I've read somewhere on Amazon, uh, like uh, Amazon reviews, five foot eight and above, this is no problem because you'd want the seat out this far anyway for five foot eight and beyond anyway. For me, being five foot six, it's a slightly problematic because here, look, I've got no space between the back of the chair and my knee. Generally, you wanna fit two fingers back here, but I can't fit anything. So the chair seat pan is essentially broken and you have to use it in its maximum extended position. So if you are shorter and you like to sit ergonomically, deal breaker. If you're shorter and you like to sit as an ergonomic rebel, it could be a huge plus because then you got a lot more seat pan. If you're five foot eight and above, it could also be just a non-issue as well because this is how far you'd want to extend the seat anyway. The seat pad is phenomenal. As I mentioned before, it's nice and thick. I would say it's definitely a medium firm firmness. So if you like something that's soft and squishy, this isn't gonna be for you. It's definitely on the firmer side, but you can rest because it's firmer. You can rest assured knowing that it will definitely support your weight. So when it says 300 pounds, I think it can support that full 300 pounds. And as I stated before, when you extend that seat pan all the way out, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and yank it because it takes too long to use the knob anyway. Uh, when you extend it all the way out, you don't feel this gap back here, which is a huge plus as well. Seat's really well done, soft all around. So that means that if you're somebody who likes to do that single leg tuck, if you're somebody who likes to do the double leg tuck, if you're somebody, however you wanna sit, this seat allows for it. Uh, just the downside is that because it's fabric, as always, it's gonna be a little bit hotter compared to an all mesh chair, and it's just going to absorb all the booty juices that you release in this thing. And for a chair that's pretty comfortable like this one, I imagine that's gonna be quite a bit. Moving to the armrests. So the armrests are, again, metal here, really well built, doesn't rattle. The biggest drawback of the arms is that it moves a little too easily. But first, let's break down the functions. So there's a little tab up here. So with that, you can move the chair, uh, move the arm up and down. You can go ahead and slide it in and out, just like that. Then you can go ahead and slide it forward and back, and then it swivels, one, middle, and out. So it's a 4D armrest but it is really easy to move. So watch this. If I just, with a finger, I can just barely any strength and it just kind of slides. Same with the forward and back. It moves really easily. And this can become a little dangerous if you're somebody who's like me and who likes to hold the arms and lift yourself up. You can imagine that if it's in, it'll just kind of move it out of the way. If you're really particular about your armrest, just by accidentally hitting it, it can just move the arms out of position as well and can be a little annoying to have to like find that exact position once again. The, the, the swivel though is pretty good. It's a little more tense, but everything else is really easy to slide around. The arm pad cushions are not great. These are pretty stiff. I mean, if you're putting your elbow on it and stuff like that, it's definitely, uh, yeah, really, really firm. When it comes to the backrest and lumbar support, I think the backrest feels really good. It's got a nice curvature here, giving you nice lumbar support, but then most importantly, when you sit in the chair and you kind of spread those arms out, you actually get a lot of space in the chair and your arms don't crash into the side. Yeah, you end up hitting them, but it's not like, it, some chairs are kind of curved inward and so when you move those arms out, you bang into the side of the chair. This includes the uh, Razor chair that I reviewed a, a couple weeks ago and that thing, I just slammed into the edges and it just hurts so much. This one, you get a lot of movement inside the chair. And what's also really cool is that this chair actually gets a good amount of movement. Let me go ahead and lock this thing. And you can see that this thing actually kind of flexes and moves a little bit. You actually get some movement in this chair, which for a $300 chair is actually really phenomenal and it feels really, really good. Another critical flaw though about this chair is the lumbar support. Now, if you're somebody who kind of sits off of the back, so your butt is slid just a slight bit forward and you're kind of leaning back into the backrest of the chair, you should be okay. But if you're like me and when you want to sit ergonomically, scooch all the way back, man, that lumbar support can really, really dig. 
It is an all plastic lumbar support, which means it is literally this thing here and it's just all plastic. And because of the aggressive bend here, this thing is pushing in pretty damn hard. And what that means is that even at its lowest setting, uh, it can really dig in and you can really feel that plastic. It gets doubly worse. Like if you're wearing jeans and something like this isn't the thickest shirt, whatever this is called, uh, flannel or whatever, it's not super thick. If you're wearing jeans and it's got a thinner waistband, it's not so bad. But if you're wearing sweat, something with a thicker waistband, man, this thing can really, really dig in there and it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. You might be able to slip in some kind of pad here that might relieve it a little bit, but that's something to keep in mind. You get aggressive lumbar support and because of it's all plastic, it does dig. In terms of movement though, this thing does go slightly up and down and that's pretty much it. You can't move it in or out. The next critical flaw about this chair is the headrest. This thing is just terrible. Like the movements are not bad. So basically you can move up and down and the way it works is that you click it up and then when you get all the way to the top, it just drops back down. So you can kind of lock it in any position. Again, like the armrest, it's really easy to move. So if you just touch it, it's just gonna like slide up. So it, it's really, really loose. Uh, otherwise the head can pan like this or, or tilt, but the tilt is really terrible. Like it barely tilts. And then the biggest issue about this headrest is that it is way too far back. Like there is no way to bend this thing. Like I wish you could turn it, but you can't turn this stupid thing forward and back. And because of that, this headrest sits way too far back to use. So watch, I'm gonna be sitting inside this chair and watch me try to use the headrest. Look how far I gotta go back. Right now I'm like triple chinning because I'm not trying to exaggerate either. Like this is not a comfortable position. This is, I'm like double or triple chinning right now. And uh, yeah, like look how far back I am. And this is not comfortable. Uh, even if you were to like tilt it, it's just, it's not comfortable. It doesn't, I wish you could bring it in, but there's no way to adjust it. The only time you might use this headrest is when you're tilted back. But even then, man, like you can, like this is, you can only look upwards in this headrest. You can't look forward in this headrest, at least not comfortably. Like again, I'm double chinning right now because I have to force my head downwards instead of being able to pull the headrest toward me so that, and then turning it so then I can look forward like this. Instead, I'm kind of scooched back and you can probably see, I mean, I have multiple chins anyway, but you could probably see this double chin right here. So the headrest for me is just, it's just useless. Kalami recommends a weight limit of 300 pounds and I kind of stated this before. I think the seat cushion can definitely handle it. In terms of height, I think the chair goes pretty low. I think you could be as low as like five foot two, five foot three. Just keep in mind the seat pan issue that I talked about. And in terms of maximum height, I think you could be easily accommodate up to like six foot four in this. The backrest goes really tall and it's really inoffensive. As I sit in it, again, I'm shorter, I'm not the tallest guy, but as I sit in it, I don't feel any kind of back discomfort and moving up, it does turn in a little bit, but it's still wide enough that I don't think it's gonna press into your shoulder blades unless you have really, really wide shoulders. If you're on the taller end and you decide to check this chair out, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. The Kalami Atlas has a three year warranty, which is pretty good for a chair at this price. However, I don't know anything about their customer service support. I don't know anything about that. So whether or not they honor that, whether or not what that experience is like, I can't really speak on it. Now, if you're looking at this chair and you're like, hey, it's got some critical flaws. I don't really want to deal with that. Here are a couple alternatives and these are all chairs that I've reviewed. The first one is going to be the Clatina Mellet. The Clatina Mellet is a chair that's under $200 if you want a headrest, which is better than this one. It's a little bit more at a little over 200. It's like $212. The Clatina Mellet has a, is a, is a great chair as well. It steals a different feature from the Steelcase Leap, the tilt back, which feels like the Steelcase Leap V2 tilt, you know, which is again, a $1,400, $1,500 chair. And it just feels really, really good. It's a solid package. The biggest complaint on that is that it's got plastic legs as opposed to metal legs on this one, and they can tend to break. Another alternative, uh, if you're looking for a chair similarly priced to the Atlas, is going through the Branch Ergonomic Chair. I think the Branch Ergonomic Chair is a phenomenal chair at about $300. The chair feels really good. It feels definitely more comfortable than the Kalami Atlas because it's got a softer seat. But unlike the Kalami Atlas uh, seat pad, I, I think that the Branch Ergonomic seat will flatten over time because it is a little softer, it's a little thinner compared to the Atlas. And then if you want a chair that's guaranteed to last you for 12 years, it's gonna be much more expensive than this at double the price, it's the Hayward Soji. I sat on all four of these just back to back to check them out and the Hayward Soji is definitely the most comfortable, but it also costs about $575. 
Now you're like, well, that's a lot more, it's twice the price. But keep in mind that that chair gets 12 year warranty. That is four times the warranty that you're getting on the Kalami Atlas and a little over double the time on the branch ergonomic chair. So something to keep in mind, it definitely feels the most comfortable, but you are gonna pay a premium for that extra warranty for that extra comfort on the Hayward Soji. If you like this video, as always, links to everything will be in the description. Like, subscribe, let me know what you guys think about the Atlas in the comments. Until next time, stay safe and as always, stay honest.